Hi everyone, this is G.B. Sebastian and I am going to discuss about functional areas of cerebrum today. And so there are three different types of functional areas mainly. Uh, the first one is motor area, the second is sensory area, the third we are going to discuss about is association areas. So let's um, uh, see what these areas are about. The motor areas are mainly involved in the activity of the skeletal muscles. They are involved in the activity of skeletal muscles. And these sensory areas, they are involved in the perception of senses. And association areas, they are involved in the integration and processing of uh, mental functions. Intelligence, reasoning, thinking, judgment, all these. Okay, So let's um, see each one of them. So first we are going to discuss about the motor areas. In that we will, be, we will be discussing about the primary motor area and the motor speech area. Okay. So the primary motor area, yeah, primary motor cortex. And this is present anterior to the central sulcus. As we discussed in the earlier uh, video about the sulcuses, we discussed about central sulcus, lateral sulcus, parieto occipito, uh, parieto occipital sulcus, all these. Okay, so this area, primary motor area, is present anterior to the uh, central sulcus and situated within the frontal lobe. This is present within the uh, frontal lobe and controls activities of the skeletal muscles. So I can show you that. So here, this is the central sulcus. Here is the central sulcus. And this area, primary motor area, is present anterior to the uh, central sulcus. Here, this area is primary motor area or the primary motor cortex, the primary motor area, which is responsible for uh, controlling the activities of the skeletal muscles. Okay, from this area, the nerve fibers from this area, they pass downwards, they pass downwards uh, through the brain and uh, when they come when they reach the, the level of the middle oblongata, they cross over to the other side. So they cross over to the other side. These, sensory, these nerve fibers, motor nerve fibers, when they descend down and they at the level of middle oblongata, they cross over to the other side. So primary motor area of the right cerebral hemisphere, if it is of the right cerebral hemisphere, then it controls the activity of the left side of the body. So the primary motor area of the right side of the cerebral hemisphere will control the, uh, the activity of the muscles of the left side of the body and the left uh, the primary motor area of the left side, left cerebral hemisphere will control the right side of the body. This is because the nerve fibers, they descend down and at the level of middle oblongata, they cross us over to the other side. Okay, that's the reason for that. Now, motor speech area. This motor speech area is also called Broca's area, Broca's area and it is situated within the frontal lobe. Again, this is again uh, situated within the frontal lobe and it is present just above the lateral sulcus, present just above the lateral sulcus and it controls motor speech area. It controls the muscles involved in speech, controlling the muscles involved in speech area, speech. So I can show you that. The Broca's area, yeah, speech area, motor speech area. This is present here and it is in the, in the, in the frontal lobe and just above the lateral sulcus. Here is the lateral sulcus and this area is present just above the lateral sulcus and is present within the frontal lobe. Responsible for uh, controlling the muscles involved in speech. Now we are moving on to sensory areas. And in the sensory area, we will discuss about the visual area, somatosensory area, auditory area, uh, olfactory area and taste area. Okay, so first we are going to discuss about the visual area. This visual area is present uh, behind the parieto occipital sulcus. The parieto occipital sulcus is the sulcus present between the parietal and the occipital uh, lobe of the brain, of the cerebrum. And it occupies major part of the occipital lobe occupying major part of the occipital lobe and the function here is it receive and interpret the impulses from the eye receiving the impulses from the eye uh, which is being carried by the optic nerve so it is receive and interpret the impulses from the eye helps in vision see that, that can see that here from the eye 
from the routine of the eye the nerve impulses are carried by optic nerve of uh, then uh, first to the thalamus and from there it is redistributed to the visual cortex or the visual area and this visual area is present uh, behind the parieto occipital sulcus this sulcus is parieto occipital sulcus this is parieto occipital sulcus and this uh, area is present posterior to the parieto occipital sulcus and it uh, it uh, occupy major part of the occipital lobe of the cerebrum okay now we are going to discuss about the somatosensory area the somatosensory area is present we are situated just behind the central sulcus just immediately behind the central sulcus and um, that's it is present within the uh, situated within the parietal lobe and it receive impulses of touch pain temperature pressure all these now these these senses are been received in the somatosensory area so we will show you that so here you can see the central sulcus this is a central sulcus and um, this somatosensory area is present just behind the uh, central sulcus primary somatosensory cortex or somatosensory area is present just behind the central sulcus and this lobe of the brain of uh, the cerebrum is parietal lobe this is present in the, uh, towards anterior part of the parietal lobe and present just posterior to the central sulcus okay it is also receive impulses from the skeletal muscles and joints this area we will receive impulses from the skeletal muscles as well as the joints and this uh, somatosensory area of the right cerebral hemisphere uh, will receive impulses from the left side of the body it is receiving impulses from the skeletal muscles and joints and other structures from the left side of the body it are uh, the uh, sensory nerve fibers that ascend through the spinal cord reaches the medulla oblongata from there it crosses over to the other side and it is applying to the okay right side from the left side of the body it carry the impulses to the right cerebral hemisphere somatosensory area of the right cerebral hemisphere and the vice versa from the right side of the body the impulses go along the right side of the uh, um, uh, spinal cord reaches the medulla oblongata from there it crosses over to the other side and uh, it um, sends impulses to the somatosensory area of the left side of the cerebral hemisphere so somatosensory area of the right cerebral hemisphere will receive impulses from the left side of the body and vice versa means the to opposite okay then auditory area auditory means hearing area this is situated below the lateral sulcus below the lateral sulcus i'm sorry so this is present below the lateral sulcus and which is present within the temporal lobe present within the temporal lobe the lobe the side of the uh, cerebrum and it receive and interpret the impulses from the ear auditory area it is receiving the impulses from the ear and helps in hearing and uh, carried by cochlear part of the vestibular cochlear nerve in the vestibular cochlear nerve there are two parts cochlear part and the vestibular part cochlear part is responsible for hearing and the vestibular part is responsible for balance and posture and where uh, they send impulses to the cerebellum okay so here uh, auditory area you can see that here the auditory area auditory association area or auditory area responsible for um hearing and this is present just below the uh, lateral sulcus this is the lateral sulcus and this lobe uh, this lobe of the brain or uh, the cerebrum is a uh, temporal lobe present within the temporal lobe just just below the lateral sulcus okay so that you can see that here so here uh, from the from the ear there are impulses that are being first they they reach the thalamus and from there it is distributed to the auditory area auditory cortex or the auditory area and this area is present just below the the lateral sulcus and this is present within the temporal lobe okay so this is the ear from where uh, the sound waves are been collected goes through the outer ear goes to the middle ear and inner ear and in the inner ear it from the cochlea snail shell uh, shaped structure from the ear uh, from the organ of cauti those impulses are carried by the cochlear part of the vestibular cochlear nerve and they carry the impulses to the to the auditory area 
and from there this uh, the nerve impulses are received and uh, interpreted and helps in hearing and olfactory area olfactory means uh, sense of smell situated within the temporal lobe in this is again situated within the temporal lobe and they receive and interpret impulses from the nose carried by olfactory nerve so i can show the show you that here the olfactory area you can see the olfactory area this is present here within the uh, temporal lobe within the temporal lobe and they receive the impulses from the nose okay so you can see that here the no the impulses from the nose they reach the olfactory cortex or the olfactory area where those impulses from the nose are being received and interpreted and helps in the sense of smell and taste area this is situated above the lateral sulcus above the lateral sulcus and deep to the somatosensory area deep within the somatosensory area with the, the function is to receive and interpret impulses from the taste buds of the tongue and helps in the uh, sense of taste okay you can see that here the taste area the taste area here okay and then uh, i can show you that here so here the tongue and from the taste buds of the tongue the the nerve impulses they are being brought to the to the gustatory area gustatory area gustatory area or the taste area right then association areas in the association area we will discuss about premotor area prefrontal area vernix area and ox parieto occipito temporal area the premotor area premotor which is an area present uh, anterior to the motor area primary motor area so here this is anterior to the motor area present anterior to the motor area so this, this lies within the frontal lobe and this premotor area is involved in the repetition of a learned pattern of movements learning learned pattern of movements are repeated uh, with the help of this area okay so here uh, such as tying a shoelace or uh, writing or doing any activity any skill which was been learned so the repetition of a learned skill or a learned activity is with the help of uh, the premotor area so you can see that here the premotor cortex or the premotor area this area is premotor area which is present anterior to the primary motor area just anterior to the primary motor area this is premotor area premotor area present within this lobe this lobe is uh, the frontal lobe present within the frontal lobe then prefrontal area situated within the anterior part of the frontal lobe anterior part of the frontal lobe and lies anterior to the premotor area this is again present anterior to the pre uh, motor area and it is well developed in human beings and they are involved in intellectual activities mainly so the, here you can see the prefrontal area this is the prefrontal area this is the anterior part major part of the anterior part of the of the brain or uh, major part of the uh, the frontal lobe anterior part of the frontal lobe is prefrontal area okay we are responsible for intellectual functions then next is vernix area vernix area or you can call it has the posterior speech area posterior speech area or the vernix area this is situated within the temporal lobe within the temporal lobe and near to the parieto occipito temporal area so parieto very near to the parieto occipito temporal area and present within the temporal lobe involved in understanding the language and perception of a spoken word or helps in understanding the language and perceiving a spoken word so that's vernix area or posterior speech area so here you can see that the vernix area which is involved in language comprehension understanding the language understanding a spoken word this area which is present uh, so close to the parieto occipito temporal a uh, region or the area so um, this is present in the temporal lobe okay let's see this is in the temporal lobe and is responsible for understanding the language and uh, perceiving a sp spoken word okay that's about vernix area and then the last one parieto occipito temporal area parieto occipito temporal area the name itself is it suggests that it is an area present within the parietal lobe occipital and temporal lobe the major part uh, is occupied in the parietal lobe and it also occupies the occipital lobe and the temporal lobe so it, thus it is parieto occipito temporal area and situated behind the somatosensory area 
behind the somatosensory area so here you can see the central sulcus and this area is somatosensory area and this is the parietal lobe and this area is present here so parieto occipito temporal area which major major part of the parietal lobe then uh, some part of the occipital lobe and the temporal lobe is um, is press is occupied by parieto occipito temporal area and this is involved in understanding a written language understanding the written languages spatial awareness uh, understanding the space understanding the distance understanding the depth so spatial awareness and naming of objects all these are the functions of parieto occipito temporal area so this was uh, the area uh, the different functional areas of the brain so in that we discussed about motor area then we discussed about sensory area then we discussed about uh, the association areas i think you um, you understood uh, the points i may, wanted to make uh, the thing so so simple and i have, uh, so that everybody understands it and thanks for watching thanks for your time and you may also watch uh, nursing edu tech channel for more informative video videos like this you can see that in the description box thank you very much